Hello, it's me, the Pageant Nerd, and thank you for checking out my latest video, taking a fresh and nerdy look at the world of beauty pageants. Today's video is a fun and fancy free countdown of my top 10 all-time favorite Miss Universe winning performances. That's right, winning performances, not performances of any queen, and their performance on finals night only. The countdown covers the era that I've personally watched Miss Universe religiously each year, that being from the early 1980s to today. I indeed watched my first Miss Universe 40 years ago this year, the 1983 edition from St. Louis, Missouri. Yikes, I'm getting on a bit. In the likely outcome that you disagree with my selections, please refrain from writing nasty remarks. I'd love for you to leave your own list of favorites in the comments, but these are just my selections. Nothing more, nothing less. They're just as valid as yours, even if they happen to be different. And I'm picking 10 queens out of the past 40 years, so there are bound to be a lot of exclusions. 75% to be exact. As I mentioned just now, I'm basing my selections purely on finals night performance only. Why is that, you might ask? Why not include the quality and impact of their reign as well? Well, in short, finals night performance provides the most even playing field to compare queens of different eras. The more recent queens have had the advantage of social media and the internet in general, tracking their journey before and after their crowning. Up until around 10 years ago, we really didn't get a sense of what a Miss Universe did during her reign. So you can be pretty sure that what Miss Universes in the 1980s, 90s and early 2000s did during their reigns, well, your guess is as good as mine. Typically, for a queen to make this list, one memorable moment alone, a jaw-dropping gown performance, a mic drop answer in the Q&A, won't cut it. It's got to be an iconic performance from start to finish, and one that I enjoy re-watching from time to time. I'll also quickly mention a few queens that just missed out on my top 10. But without further ado, let's get into my personal top 10 favorite Miss Universe winning performances of all time. Here we go. Catriona Gray's preparation in 2018 was second to none. She was so polished and quite possibly had the most complete preparation of any eventual winner. And she came to Bangkok with an arsenal that proved impossible to beat and which was on full glorious display on finals night. Her slow-mo turn during swimsuits that even caught Tyra Banks' eye. The lava walk, her volcano-inspired gown paying tribute to her mother's hometown. And of course, her incredibly thoughtful answers during multiple rounds. And I would bring this aspect as a Miss Universe to see situations with a silver lining. And to... You may be wondering why Catriona doesn't feature higher up on this list. For me, it was a lack of a spontaneous moment that allowed me to see a little more of Catriona's personality, apart from maybe her fangirling moment on Neo's arm in the final look. As you'll see with some of the other queens on this list, they had unscripted, unprepared moments that made me fall in love with them a little bit more. But hey, that's just my opinion. I still love you, Kat. Our reigning Miss Universe makes my top 10 with her similarly highly polished performance, which proved to me that Miss Universe can be someone who takes her real-world passion and or profession as opposed to a purely charitable initiative, and turns it into something that transforms the lives of others. As a fashion designer, she helps give women who've been victims of domestic violence or human trafficking important life skills. And in addition to her stunning performances in swimsuit and especially evening gown, she got her message across loud and clear with her final word. It is so important to invest and others invest in our community and use your unique talent to make a difference. We all have something special and when we plant those seeds to other people in our life, 
we transform them and we use that as a vehicle for change. As I mentioned in a previous video, sometimes these responses can sound to me a little schmaltzy and over-rehearsed. And clearly Arbany had rehearsed this answer, but it really encapsulated what it means to be a Miss Universe in the 2020s. Just wonderful. <music>
Very few women have left such a lasting impression on the Miss Universe stage by the power of their words. Another one is higher up on this top 10 list, but Zosibini Tunzi had the pageant world spellbound in 2019. Not only with her top three answer, but even earlier on finals night when she spoke about activating her black girl magic while singing her morning affirmations. Zozzy had a killer evening gown in prelims, but my goodness did she step it up a notch or three with her beaded ombre finals night gown, representing the desert and ocean of her homeland. And then came one of the most impactful answers in Miss Universe history. I think the most important thing we should be teaching young girls today is leadership. It's something that has been lacking in young girls and women for a very long time, not because we don't want to, but because of what society has labeled women to be. I think we are the most powerful beings on the world and that we should be given every opportunity and that is what we should be teaching these young girls to take up space. Nothing as important as taking up space in society and cementing yourself. Thank you. In a year in which the Queens had more speaking opportunities than normal, Zozzy put the cherry on top with her final word, which from my point of view sealed the deal if indeed there was any remaining doubt that South Africa was going to win its second Miss Universe crown in three years. I'll never forget watching Miss Universe 2015, and not just for the obvious reasons. I was on holiday at the time in the UK and visiting friends in London so I had to stay up until the very early hours to catch a live stream, which clearly ended in the most dramatic fashion. Regardless, Pia carried the considerable hopes of her nation with such grace and confidence, while at the same time projecting somewhat of an underdog vibe, competing against the queens from Colombia, USA, Dominican Republic and Venezuela. And even with her mini trip during the evening gown competition, her smize steadied the ship. Her reactions to being called into the top five and as the final one into the top three was so sincere. During the final word round, when asked why she should be the next Miss Universe, her response, while clearly rehearsed, was spoken from the heart. I want to show the world, the universe rather, that I am confidently beautiful with a heart. Thank you. Of course, her actual crowning, becoming her country's first Miss Universe in 42 years, made this an unforgettable moment in pageant history. But Pia had already put together a hugely memorable performance, which, drama aside, is what we're looking at today. When the fierce beauty queen prototype was starting to emerge in the late 90s, Wendy Fitzwilliam's coolness, calm and grace won out over the likes of Verushka Ramirez from Venezuela and Joyce Gerard from Puerto Rico. Staged in Hawaii, Miss Universe 1998 was a beautifully produced pageant with so many expressions of the local culture throughout the telecast. At that time, the semi-final interviews had a novel format, where the delegates were paired with a fellow contestant earlier in the pageant and had to answer questions about their counterpart's country. When Wendy talked about her countries and Japan's shared love of partying, you knew she was one to watch that night. It's beautiful, and then Tokyo is party town, and I'm a Trini. Carnival is my thing, I know how to party. Very good, thank you very much. Her performances in the fabulous and fun swimsuit and evening gown competitions were the epitome of classic elegance. While she was asked to sing during her top five interview, she also had the chance to deliver a substantive answer about collaboration between her fellow Caribbean nations. She had a minor stumble during the top three Q&A, but by that point, it was clear Wendy had secured Trinidad and Tobago's second Miss Universe crown, chaotic crowning and all. Landing in my runner-up spot is none other than India's Lara Dutta. Riding the wave of India's supremacy in alpha pageants in the 1990s, Lara brought a never-before-seen level of sexiness from an Indian queen into the Millennium Miss Universe in Cyprus. 
with a string of queens immediately before her opting for white, gold or silver gowns. Lara wore a knockout, figure-hugging red gown, mirroring that of Madusa Pri, who started India's placement streak eight years earlier. I think what makes women politicians different from men is a certain amount of sensitivity. And then of course there was her voice, a rare mixture of deep, sultry and incredibly articulate. This girl blows me away, completely blows me away. She's absolutely breathtaking and she really... Her top five Q&A score, while not shown as a composite mark, was 9.954, the highest televised score from any round in Miss Universe history. And with the eventual result already clear, Lara put it beyond a shadow of a doubt with her top three response. Her gesture of taking the mic from host Sinbad just added to the drama, the power of the moment and the content of her answer. Game over. I think pageants like the Miss Universe pageant gives us young women a platform to foray into the fields that we want to and forge ahead, be it entrepreneurship, be it the armed forces, be it politics. It gives us a platform to voice our choices and opinions and makes us strong independent that we are today. Thank you. Thank you, India. Before we get to my number one pick, I thought I'd do a handful of honourable mentions, again from the 1980s onwards. These ones are in chronological order, however, not ranked. With such a memorable semi-final interview, and with a fair bit of favouritism, if you ask me, from host Bob Barker, Cecilia Boloco had the 1987 title in the bag from that point onwards, but she surged into an unbeatable position with her elegance in swimsuit and evening gown, scoring Chile's first and so far only Miss Universe title. Holland's Angela Visser came from a weak sash nation, but she totally dominated Miss Universe 1989. Surprisingly, Angela was unplaced at Miss World the previous year, but she was the clear winner in Cancun, Mexico. To me, her performance was one of the most clear-cut in the pageant's history. From another unheralded pageant nation, Namibia's Michelle McLean fended off major challenges from Venezuela and Colombia in Bangkok to become only the second African woman to win Miss Universe. Her maturity and eloquence belied her 19 years, having already made top five at Miss World the year before. Her incredible warmth, grace and sincerity won me over throughout the night, as did her eloquence in answering the top three final question. Brooke didn't make my top 10 because I felt other queens outshone her during the earlier rounds, in particular the phenomenal Denny Mendez, Miss Italy. But with her incredible speaking abilities, she surged to victory with her top three answer. I would eat everything in the world. It was an answer packed with humour and wit, but Brooke later revealed she gave that response as a veiled protest against the fat shaming outgoing Miss Universe Alicia Machado had faced, not only leading up to Miss Universe 1997, but even on finals night, when there was a telephone viewer poll about beauty queens maintaining their physical condition. Truly one of the Trump era's lowest moments. There was another mic drop moment just two years later, and again about a controversial topic relating to a contestant. Umpule Quelehobe, Botswana's first ever Miss Universe entrant, swept to victory largely with her answer on the topic of pregnancy after the disqualification that year of Miss Guam. Personally, I think Miss Universe is a symbol of a woman as well. She's celebrating her femininity. Earlier in the evening, Mpule was overshadowed by the likes of Spain, South Africa and especially the Philippines. But when Miriam Kiambao stumbled on her final question, Mpule was there to create history for her country. Coincidentally, married women and mothers will be allowed to compete for the first time at Miss Universe 2023 onwards.
having already put India's first two Miss Universes in my top 10, its third was quite the possibility. As you may have already seen, I correctly predicted Harnaz would win Miss Universe 2021, and her performance on finals night did not disappoint. Every round was a stunner, especially her final answer, so full of passion and emotion. Holding hands with Paraguay as the final two, you could see how badly Harnaz wanted the win, and win she did, breaking India's 21-year victory drought. All right, we're finally here. Now it's time for my all-time favourite Miss Universe winning performance. Miss Universe. That means Sushmita San Miss India. You are the new Miss Universe. Miss Universe 2008 is Venezuela. South Africa. Is Philippines. I know this one might raise some eyebrows. Did she end up being the best Miss Universe ever? Maybe not, but in my opinion, her performance in Las Vegas was jaw-dropping and memorable, especially for its time. To me, it was so impactful, and there was no doubt that it was her destiny to win Miss Universe. Do you speak any English at all? Uh, yes. What? Okay. Welcome to Entertainment Tonight. You, you have Bob Goins and me. There, oh, and you. Okay, great. After an entertaining semi-final interview, her swimsuit performance was just wow, wow, wow. Now you have to remember this wasn't in a time when Miss Grand International like antics were the norm. Alicia was extra in the absolute best possible way. And then she did a complete 180 for evening gowns, demonstrating pure elegance in a stunning light turquoise dress. If you could choose only one, would you choose smart, rich or beautiful? I would choose to be smart because being smart, you can also be rich and beautiful. Winning all three semi-final rounds, her top six response was fun but well delivered. And then her top three answer drew raucous applause and some laughter, translated slightly differently from how she actually delivered it. The interpreter seemingly relishing its delivery. I believe they can learn very much because thanks to us women, the men are here in this beautiful theater, seeing this beautiful contest and applauding me because I am a beautiful woman. From start to finish, Alicia Machado dominated Miss Universe 1996, not only with her incredible beauty, but with an abundance of charm, humor and undeniable personality. And for me, the most memorable and my favorite performance from an eventual Miss Universe from the past 40 years. And there you have it. How did these compare with your favorite Miss Universe winning performances? As I said earlier, I'd love to hear your favorites, but please keep your comments respectful. I've had requests for more content from other pageants and I'll get to some soon. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. This is the Pageant Nerd. Bye for now. <laughs>